Hi folks, I'm Dennis. Today I'm going to be fixing a common problem on a Honda VT750 Deluxe American Classic Edition motorcycle. My bike is a 2003 uh, Honda 750 Ace, they call it, American Classic Edition. Common problem on these bikes is a coolant leak on the crossover tube between the two cylinders. I'm going to show you, show you an easy way to make this repair and uh, save yourself a trip to the shop. So let's get started. Crossover tube is uh, located right under the carbs between the cylinders. See if I can get in there to show you. There's the carburetors are right there. Of course, you got your back cylinder, your front cylinder, choke knob, and then right here you can see that that crossover tube right there the the clips one on each side front and back um, and it's a it's a pretty tight space but you can move those clips and slide that tube out enough just to get the o-rings off and put the new ones on I'm gonna take my uh, choke knob loose right here just to get it out of the way because my hands are kind of big and I don't believe I can get in there with that choke knob there, so I'm going to take it off and move it uh, out of the way and then should be ready to work on it. Here's what you're going to need for this job. You're going to need a set of metric Allen wrenches. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. You might want to get a long set, um, extended reach needle nose pliers if you've got them. A little pro pick like I've got here um, with a hook on one end. And believe it or not, you're going to need some dental floss. And I'll show you why later. You need two of these clips. <clears throat> and you need two O-rings. Um, I ordered mine online. They're pretty cheap. I want to say total for both clips and both O-rings. It was uh, 6 or $8. So fairly cheap. Um, here's the part numbers. There are several places online you can order them. Again, my bike is a 2003. I don't know if all the part numbers are the same for, um, for all the year models of uh, the 750 Aces. But for mine, that's the part number for the uh, clip. And that's the part number for the O-ring. And you need two of each. There's, there's a clip and an o-ring on the front and a clip and an o-ring on the back of that tube. All right, you need a uh, five millimeter uh, Allen wrench to take the choke knob off with. And I'm gonna tuck that up underneath that, that mixture knob on the carb. <clears throat> set your nut your uh, cat bolt off somewhere where you don't lose it okay so you can just these these clips are in a groove these spring clips on the tube and you can you can turn that and rotate that clip around and what you need to do is turn it around where you can get to the the back side of it the top here's how that clip looks you need to be able to get to this part right here so you can grab it and pull it off so I just grab that clip and uh, slide it off when I pop this tube out the coolant's gonna run down to the bottom of the V and then you know across the uh, across the cover and then down below to right next to the kickstand so <clears throat> I've got a little catch basin right there up underneath the uh, um, the cover so the easiest way to move this tube is to leave first of all you want to leave one of the clips on there just so you don't lose the tube down in that uh, in those bosses I don't know if it'll go that far but I don't want to find out because that means I got to take the cylinder off um, but just take, leave that clip on there, one clip on, and uh, 
put your, you know, you need to put a rag in here or um, if you're not too worried about it, you can just pry on that bolt head. But just get the back side of that, or the top of that clip where you're going to pull it off from and give it a little bit of a backward pull. And you can see that tube coming out and then the O-ring will clear. And then when it does, you're going to start draining antifreeze. Okay, I'm going to take a small probe hook and uh, I'm going to reach in here, hopefully you can see this, reach in here and catch that O-ring. I'm replacing this O-ring so I don't really care if I nick it. Well, I broke it. Alright, so you'll probably notice if you've got a leak when you take it off that it's pretty stiff and maybe even got some uh, like some cracks in it from being dry that's what's causing a leak so uh, anyway there's one of them off now let's get the new one on oh um, failed to mention this a minute ago I learned as I slid this tube out that it doesn't matter if you take both spring clips off it's not going to go anywhere. Um, it can only travel so far, so um, you don't have to worry about losing the tube, at least in the back cylinder. <laughs> now when it comes time to uh, press it up into the front cylinder to do this back O-ring, I'm going to put another clip on there just to make sure. Because again, I don't want to lose it inside the cylinder, just in case. You'll notice when you uh, open up and take out the one of the new O-rings, it's a lot more pliable. So, uh, dry cracks, anything like that. It's nice and smooth and that'll keep it from, uh, that'll keep your coolant from leaking, which is a good thing. So we've got the, uh, the old O-ring off with a pick. Well, pick is fine for the old O-ring because we're replacing it, but you don't want to use a uh, pick on the new O-ring because it'll, it'll nick it. And if you've got a nick in that O-ring, push this tube back in, you're going to have a coolant leak still. So, here's the trick. Dental floss. I picked this tip up from a fellow online known as Old School Soldier off of the uh, Honda Shadow forum, uh, hondashadow.net forum. He's got a, uh, a write-up of this in there. So, this was a great idea from him, and I'm going to use it because it works okay so I don't believe I can get my hands in there without taking the air filter off so it's pretty easy to take it off you got, uh, got a five millimeter uh, cap head bolt right there you can use a wrench or you can use an allen wrench I don't know, I use an allen wrench got one on the front and then you got another one right there on the back Loosen those up, you don't have to take them all the way out. Now I can get my hands in through here to get my dental floss on the back side. So we're going to take the O-ring and uh, thread a couple pieces of dental floss through there, just like so. Anyway, do it like that, and then we can get this uh, get this O-ring in there like so, and uh, pull it over the um, end of that tube. Because there's no way that we're going to get a finger in here. It's just too tight. Not enough room. So, this will be the way around it. Okay, another, another thing to remember is... Uh, Keep your hands clean while you're uh, doing this. You don't want a bunch of grimy stuff on your fingers getting on the O-ring. Um, that'll keep the O-ring from sealing up right. So, all right, I took my pick and I just threaded my floss. You know, I just kind of held it up and pushed it through the other side with the breather cover off. Now I can reach up in there, pull it through, and then use the floss to pop the O-ring onto the end of the tube. 
you might actually find this easier to do it with two people. Um, just depending on your reach and whatnot, but I think most people can probably do it. You want to be careful not to stretch this O-ring too much because then it won't seat. And once you got it in there, just uh, separate your floss. Kind of carefully slide that out. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. And then. Same thing on the other side. I'm actually going to pull that through so I can see it better. I've got more light on this side, so. <clears throat> now it's important to not use these picks on the new O-ring. The last thing you want to do is nick that O-ring because it, uh, it will leak. So, all right, so now I got this on this side. I'm just going to separate my floss so I can pull one side on it. That antifreeze gets on and it likes to stick together. Slide that out real easy so you don't dislodge that o ring. <clears throat> and there you go, one that's one o ring replaced. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a new clip spring clip and we'll pop it on because I need to use it to move this tube first of all so I'm gonna pop that on there being real careful not to hit the o-ring and nick it then I'm gonna use that spring clip to uh, work this tube back be careful now what happens is with this tube, it's not a real, real tight fit. So you have to kind of be patient with it. You might have to wiggle it a little bit back and forth. It, it'll get cockeyed in there. And if it does, it binds up and then it doesn't want to slide. You shouldn't have to force it. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty smooth, or it's a, it's a pretty easy thing to move. If you find that you're having to put a lot of um, pressure on it, or force on it rather, to move it, you probably need to wiggle it a little bit and uh, free it up. It's just gotten bound up, so it moves pretty easy. Um, keep that in mind. You don't want to slip and scratch something, and you don't want to uh, to break something. So, all right, that's getting in there just fine. I'm gonna get this moved over enough to get the clip in the other groove and then I can slide it back and get the back o-ring now I've got the I've got this back groove exposed so now I'm gonna now move the clip put it in the back groove and I'm gonna push it up to the front so I can expose the back o-ring and I'm gonna swap out the back o-ring if you got a long set of needle nose pliers rather than just standard, I would recommend getting them. I don't have a pair, but I have a feeling it would make this job a whole lot easier. So, and then, you know, just thinking about it, I probably should be using one of the old spring clips to do this so that I'm not scratching it all up. I'm scratching this new one up. Um, and it would be smarter to use an old one, scratch it up with my pliers, and then put the new ones in. But I didn't, uh, I'm not that smart. I'm going to use my pick to get this other old O-ring out. Again, I don't care if I break this old one. In fact, it's probably easier if I do. Two picks would probably be easier too. I could pull it up with one and get under it with another. But I don't have two picks. There. 
So that makes it easy. Get up underneath and just break it. Pull it right off. And then catch it from the back side. Don't drop it down in that cylinder. That would probably be ugly. So there we go. Another bad, evil, leaking O-ring to the junk pile. Now same trick. Dental floss through the O-ring. I'm going to take my little pick. Cause I've got fat hands and I'm going to take the end of my floss and like so and I'm just going to pass it through there so I can grab it from the other side lay that down there make sure you don't get your o-ring nasty make sure it's all your work surfaces are clean because you don't want any grit on that o-ring Then I'm just going to reach through from the other side and pull my dental floss through so I can get my hands on it. That way I can pop it on just like I did the other one. Alright, so same drill. We're going to, hopefully you can see that. I don't have my hands in the way. I can't see the camera and do this at the same time. We'll pop that O-ring in the groove. Use my dental floss to... Uh, Work it in without stretching the um, yeah, pull it out without stretching the O-ring too far. All right, I think that's in all the way around. I'm gonna rotate the tube to make sure. I check the back side of me. Yep. <clears throat> It's in all the way. All right, so same deal. I'm just gonna very delicately slide that floss out. I'm actually gonna use my pick to separate it. It's gotten wet and it's stuck together. There we go. So, real gently just slide it out. Alright, and then we'll pull around to this side just so you can see it. And there you go. Both O-rings in. No real problem. Alright, so now what we're going to do, this is on. I'm going to carefully, using the spring clip again, I'm going to slide this tube back. And you might have to kind of, you know, turn the clip around a little bit to keep the tube from binding up. And just be patient and gentle. So you just keep doing that and you can see it's moving. Just keep working it using the clip. I'm using both ends of the clip. Okay. Now Got all that popped in there. Got the uh, O-ring seated on the back side. So push on the second spring clip. Yeah, and like I said, I, I would recommend using the old spring clips uh, to do your pushing and prying because I've kind of scratched this one new one up, and I, it's not a big deal, but I'd rather not. I'd rather have it nice and not scratched up. It won't rust and that kind of stuff. So. All right, so next order of business is to uh, start putting things back together. I'll put my my choke knob back on. I'll put my my uh, air breather back on, and then uh, put in some antifreeze. There's a <clears throat> there's a little pin right here on the bottom of the opening of the breather that goes 
right here. So you wanna make sure you got that in there. You got that in and then uh, then line up the, the ears here and here um, with the two bolts here and here, which we didn't take out all the way. But anyway, line that pin up, line those two ears up. It's pretty straightforward. Slip it right on there. <clears throat> Make sure it's pressed all the way up on there before you tighten up the uh, the cap bolts. <clears throat> um, I recommend after you replace that breather cover, go ahead and take the uh, Take the cover off, the chrome cover off, and pull the filter and make sure that this boot all in through here is, is properly seated into the back of the breather cover. You may have to push and pull it to get it to kind of make sure it's all the way seated around there, but you don't want any gaps. And there's, a, there's a little raised area right here that should be fully into the breather cover. There's a couple of marks. I don't know if I can get them on the video or not. There's a couple of marks on the reservoir cover or the reservoir bottle. There's one that you can get to pretty easy or that you can see. The other one's a little bit harder to see. There's a low mark and a high mark. The uh, And we'll try to point to it best I can with my pick. There's the high mark right there. It's just a band around the reservoir. The low mark, there's a, there's a uh, radiator hose, a lower radiator hose is right there. And the low mark is behind that. You can see it if you kind of look through here. You can see that. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill it up to the high mark and uh, then crank the engine up and let it run let the water pump uh, rotate or uh, you know get everything filled up and then check it again. So probably countless better ways to do this but this is how I do it anyway. Take the, uh, take the cap off the reservoir. I've got a long funnel. I stick it you know about an inch or so into the reservoir and then I take a bucket, I got a five gallon bucket, and I just prop it up on that. That way it's, uh, you know, it's sloped so that when I pour antifreeze in, it's not going to run back out and not go in the reservoir. And now I'm going to start the bike up and let the water pump do its work. And then check the reservoir again to make sure it's not too low or too high. Make sure it's between the two marks. like I'm right on the mark. So that's all there is to it. Um, fairly simple job. Um, keeps you from having to take the bike to the shop. And uh, now I'm ready to ride get out on the road. So I'm going to wash the bike up, get this antifreeze off the, uh, off the covers and off of the frame. And then I'll be ready to go for a ride today. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. I hope you watch some more. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in another video. Thanks a lot.